Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I offer an update on the case of Suzanne Morphew now that her remains have been discovered? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at a brief background of this case, move to the updated timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Barry Lee Morphew was born on October 17, 1967, and was raised in Alexandria, Indiana. This is north of Indianapolis. In high school, Barry met a woman named Suzanne Renee Morphew. She had been born on April 30, 1971. They started dating after Barry graduated. The couple married in 1994 and would go on to have two daughters. In 2018, they moved to Maysville, Colorado, which is 11 miles west of Salida. Barry owned a landscaping business, and Suzanne worked at a nonprofit organization. The couple lived in a house that was worth about $1.5 million. Not long after moving to Colorado, Suzanne started having an affair with a married Michigan resident named Jeff Libler. They knew each other from high school. On at least six occasions, Suzanne and Jeff traveled to various locations to meet. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On Saturday, May 9, 2020, 49-year-old Suzanne Morphew sent a selfie to her boyfriend Jeff at 2.03 p.m. Nine minutes later, she sent a message to Jeff. Her phone was not active at all after 2.30 p.m. On Sunday, May 10, Mother's Day, at about 5.58 p.m., the police were notified that Suzanne was missing. When the police spoke to Barry, he said that he last saw his wife at 5 a.m. that day when he left to go to a landscaping job. Barry drove almost three hours north to Broomfield, Colorado. Suzanne was still asleep when he left. They didn't talk to each other. No one else was in the house at that time. His daughters were in Utah on a road trip. The police initiated a search for Suzanne. Her undamaged bicycle was discovered just off Route 50, not far from the Morphew family house. After this, the police found Suzanne's bicycle helmet almost a mile from where the bicycle had been found. The police would build a case against Barry. He seemed like an obvious suspect, and his behavior was beyond suspicious. In addition, he had a strong motive to kill his wife in the form of her infidelity. On May 4, 2021, almost a year after his wife's disappearance, Barry Morphew was arrested and charged with several offenses, including first-degree murder. Investigators believe that Barry killed Suzanne on May 9, 2020, not long after her phone became inactive. The state did not do a very good job managing the case against Barry. They missed deadlines and withheld exculpatory evidence. The judge punished the state harshly by excluding several of their expert witnesses. This hurt the state's ability to proceed with the case, but so did the fact that Suzanne's body was missing. They could not prove that she was dead. On April 19, 2022, all the charges against Barry Morphew were dismissed without prejudice, which means they can be refiled later. Barry filed a civil rights lawsuit against various law enforcement officials asking for $15 million in damages. On September 22, 2023, the remains of Suzanne Morphew were found in a shallow grave in a desert area near Moffat, Colorado. This is 46 miles from Suzanne's home in Maysville. The drive time is 45 minutes. The law firm representing Barry Morphew responded to the discovery with a statement. They argued that Suzanne was found in a place that the police had never mentioned as a possibility. Investigators never claimed that Barry was anywhere south of his home in the relevant time frame. The attorneys attempted to connect Suzanne's murder to various missing person cases, implying that some type of serial killer may be on the loose and that Barry is innocent. The statement is supported by the fact that the police were actually looking for another missing woman when they stumbled upon the shallow grave. Now moving to my analysis. The discovery of Suzanne's remains is a critical breakthrough in this case. 
I would not be surprised if the state viewed this discovery as supporting their argument against Barry Morphew. Clearly, Barry's attorneys disagree. They viewed the discovery as supporting the theory that someone else must have been the killer. This raises a few questions. How does this update affect Barry's situation? Does it make him look more guilty, or does it exonerate him? And should the state refile the charges against Barry? Let's take a look at the evidence, both for and against the idea that Barry was guilty of murder, starting with the inculpatory factors. Any doubt that Suzanne was murdered was removed by the discovery of her remains in a shallow grave. Barry would have had plenty of time to kill his wife in the house, transport her body to Moffat, Colorado, bury her body in a shallow grave, and return to the house to clean up the crime scene. Just because the police never mentioned Barry driving south doesn't mean that he didn't. It wasn't like Suzanne's remains were discovered on Mars. Her body was just 45 minutes away. Suzanne's remains just happened to be directly south of where she lived, and yet Barry's alibi placed him north. The placement of her body was in the exact opposite direction of Barry's alibi location. Serial killers usually do not transport victims long distances. Only one-third of serial killers transport their victims over 24 miles. Suzanne's body was found 46 miles away. Barry's trip to Broomfield, Colorado on a Sunday seemed a bit suspicious. He did have a landscaping job in that area starting on Monday, but why did he drive there a day early? He did not inform his co-workers about what he was doing. When Barry was in Broomfield, he was captured on video disposing of trash bags in several different locations, including a McDonald's restaurant, a men's warehouse, and the hotel where he was staying. There was no evidence of a struggle where Suzanne's bicycle was discovered. Her sunglasses and hydration backpack were found in her vehicle, which makes it seem like she never went for a bicycle ride at all. If Barry was not involved, the presumption is that a stranger killed Suzanne. If she was riding a bicycle when she was taken, how did the stranger kidnap her without leaving any evidence of a struggle? If she wasn't riding the bicycle, how did the stranger find her and kidnap her? Did the stranger make entry into her house and kidnap her from there? Suzanne was having an affair for two years before she disappeared. This supplied Barry a motive for murder. Suzanne was concerned about Barry's behavior. For example, she wrote text messages to friends like, I feel no peace when he's here, and I would not feel safe alone with him. Suzanne sent a text message to Barry saying that she was done. This was just four days before she disappeared. When speaking to investigators, Barry initially implied that his marriage was perfect and Suzanne had no intention of leaving him. On May 8, 2020, two days before Suzanne disappeared, she put a note in her phone indicating that on May 6, Barry accused her of having a boyfriend. Of course, this was an accurate accusation. In addition to this note, Suzanne also had several other notes implying that Barry was harmful, threatening, oppressive, untrustworthy, and had taken her phone at one point. On May 9, Suzanne sent messages to her boyfriend just after 2 p.m., but there was no activity on her phone after 2.30 p.m. At 2.47 p.m., Barry put his own cell phone in airplane mode. Either Barry was trying to hide his activity, or he had boarded a tiny, invisible airplane. There are inconsistencies in Barry's story regarding what he did in the hours leading up to Suzanne's disappearance. On May 9, 2020, data from Barry's phone indicated he was running all around his house. He told the police that he was chasing a chipmunk. Barry claimed that he went to bed at around 8 p.m. on May 9. I guess all that chipmunk chasing was exhausting. The problem is, according to data from his truck, it was backed up toward the house at around 9.30 p.m. Barry said his alarm woke him up on May 10 at 4.30 a.m., but his alarm was not set. Both his phone and his pickup truck were moving in the 3 a.m. hour. Later, he changed his story about the timing. In his initial story to the police, Barry never mentioned turning west on Highway 50 on May 10, but later he admitted that he did. He said that he was following an elk down the highway at 4.30 a.m. Suzanne's helmet was later found near where Barry had driven that morning. 
A plastic needle cover for a tranquilizer dart was found in Barry's dryer. The police noticed a broken door in the Morphew house that was not there when he moved in. Scratch marks on Barry's arm were visible in a photo that was taken three days after his wife went missing. Barry blamed God for causing Suzanne's death because she was having an affair. This makes it seem as though Barry believed her death was justified. Moving to the exculpatory factors, in the summer of 2020, investigators found DNA from at least one unknown male in several places, including on Susan's bicycle, on her bicycle helmet, in her Range Rover, on carpet by her bed, and on the stairs in her house. Through a partial match, the DNA from her vehicle has been tied to unsolved cases involving assaults of a sexual nature in other states. The police had used Barry's cell phone data to determine he was running around to various areas of his house on the day he allegedly killed his wife, but these movements could be explained by a phenomenon called static drift. The phone may not have actually moved. The police accused Barry of shooting Suzanne with a tranquilizer dart, but admitted that his tranquilizer gun was inoperable and had not been fired in quite some time. When considering all the evidence, do I believe that Barry Morphew was guilty? I believe that Barry is probably guilty in reality, but I am not convinced beyond a reasonable doubt. It's possible that new evidence based on the discovery of Suzanne's remains will change that. I think this discovery hurts Barry's case in some ways, but in other ways it may help him. On the damaging side, the discovery proves that Suzanne was definitely murdered, she is not still alive somewhere, and she did not cause her own death. When a wife is murdered, the husband is often the culprit, especially if the relationship was tumultuous. If an examination of the body reveals anything connecting Suzanne's death to Barry, he's in big trouble. On the helpful side, investigators were looking for someone else who went missing when they found Suzanne's remains. Perhaps the same perpetrator murdered both victims. If any DNA is found on Suzanne's body and it does not belong to Barry, that would really help his case. Moving to the next question, what happened to the state's case against Barry? The state ended up in a tricky situation as far as Barry Morphew. I think that investigators were certain that he was guilty, but frustrated because they couldn't seem to find enough inculpatory evidence. There were a lot of small things that stacked up against him, but no single smoking gun. He was craftier than a chipmunk being chased by a camouflage-clad caretaker. He moved more mysteriously than a moose meandering down a motorway, matched by an early morning enigmatic Mother's Day motorist. As a side note, I realize that an elk is different than a moose, but elk doesn't start with an M. Once the state has collected all the new information tied to the discovery of Suzanne's remains, they will have an important decision to make. Assuming they don't find anything dramatic, should they refile charges against Barry Morphew? Is the discovery of the remains enough to push this case forward? If they reach a place where there is no more evidence to collect from the discovery of the remains, is their case strong enough? I think the problem the state has right now is not necessarily the absence of a smoking gun. It's the presence of the unknown DNA. Was the DNA from a conspirator that Barry recruited or from a serial killer unrelated to him? Does it have anything to do with the case at all? There is no way to know. In my opinion, the state is in a tough position. The case against Barry is right on the line. If they make their move and charge him, but he gets acquitted, they won't get another shot because of double jeopardy. If they don't charge him, what do they expect will change over time? They already found Suzanne's body. After they collect everything they can from that discovery, there probably won't be much more evidence to find. The evidence they have available will be all they will ever have. I don't know what the state should do. If I had to guess, I would say that they should probably refrain from refiling the charges for now. Their case needs to get a little stronger before taking it to trial. There is the sense that Suzanne is being denied justice because the state botched their case against Barry. Now moving to my final thoughts. Barry Morphew is in a challenging spot as far as finding any peace in his life. Many people believe he is guilty of murder, 
but he hasn't been convicted. He has to live with the knowledge that at any moment he could be arrested. Any day could be his last day of freedom. What should Barry do? Well, he could always go into business with O.J. Simpson and Casey Anthony. Maybe they could start a detective agency where they help find the real killers. Those are my thoughts in the case of Suzanne Morphew. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.